Hello YouTube, my name is Wojov Yes, and welcome back to Wild Super Smash Bros. Speculation, because of course I would do it. Uh, and this time we're focusing on speculating again about third parties, but this time, unlike normally on this channel, we're not speculating about who would be character number 5 for the Fighters Pack, but in fact we're looking into who could be the first member of a, of, a, of a third party franchise to get into Super Smash Brothers as a secondary character. Smash Brothers, as of yet, has only received one character per franchise. Now, I know we've had some characters like Richter Belmont that are and Ken that are, in fact, the second characters from a franchise getting into Smash, but they are very much Echoes, which are not really brand new, unique characters. So today we're looking at all the franchises in Super Smash Bros. and looking at who, who could be from each franchise to get in as a, you know, fighter and possibly as DLC or in the next Super Smash Bros. game, should the, this be broken and we have more than one character in. Some are more difficult than others. And then we're gonna look at who should be that number one or that first franchise i should say that gets that first pick so let's get on to it first with the characters from each franchise that could theoretically be a part of it now they might i obviously i didn't include echoes here because while well, they're different they're still the same character but slightly different so let's get started with metal gear solid and trust truth be told i could only think of one and that would be Raiden. I think he could play differently enough from Snake, and I don't know Metal Gear too much to know to say any other any other character. Also, I could guess I could say Revolver Ocelot could be another one that could be selectable as a playable fighter to be the second Metal Gear representative. Then we have Sonic, and with Sonic we actually have a difference. We have a lot of characters, but I want to focus on namely four, and those four would be. Tails, Knuckles, Shadow, and Eggman. In my personal opinion, I would prefer Eggman because Tails, Knuckles, and Shadow all very likely could end up having very similar movesets to, to Sonic. And don't give me that, they could be different. Sonic does a lot of different things in these games and in Smash is just basically a ball. So I wouldn't be too optimistic about Knuckles, Shadow, and Tails all getting too rapidly, too, too, too different of a moveset from from. From Sonic, Old Eggman, I could definitely see him getting a very, very different moveset, even being in his mech, which would be pretty damn sweet. Then we reach Mega Man, the third franchise introduced in Super, into Super Smash Bros. And with him, we have a few things. First, we have the multiple versions of Mega Man. We have Mega Man X, Mega Man.exe, uh, what's the name of the other one? I'm forgetting right now. I know all the names, uh, but I don't remember. Or which is bad. We also have Battle Network Mega Man, you know, Mega Man Starfire, I think. I know all their names and I can't remember, which is very, very, very bad. But we could have all of them as different playable characters. They're all in Super Smash Bros. already in uh, as um, either costumes in uh, for Mega Man X. And we also have the final Smash for Mega Man that includes all of them. We could also see the basically the companion or rival, I guess you could call them, for Mega Man outside on each basic franchise. We have Proto Man from the classics, Zero that debuted in Mega Man X. Now could be wrong, and I think Base is also part of the X universe. I believe X and ba Base and Zero are part of the Z of the X universe, but they have appeared in practically all the universes outside of the classic one. And Proto Man has just been kind of there, unfortunately. Uh, so any of these could work if Sakurai and Nintendo want to keep with the classic. Proto Man, I would say, is my pick. But if you want to go with what could differentiate them more, Zero and Base, I think, would be more likely, especially Zero, given his popularity. Then we get to Pac Man, and honestly, I only have Miss Pac Man. Yeah, I don't really know any. I don't know much about the Pac Man franchise outside of the classic Pac Man games, and unless they put the ghosts or an assembly of the ghosts, I could not see Pac-Man as a playable fighter. Sorry. Then, for Street Fighter, I come up with two. One that I think should clearly be it. The other one, it's kind of um, there, very much like Tails and Knuckles and Shadow. 
would be the easier one, but also very close to what we already already have. That would be Akuma. Uh, everything that I've seen from Akuma is just basically a Ryu. I know he, for my understanding, he plays different from Ryu, but he still could borrow a lot from Ryu and from Ken in Super Smash Brothers, so I prefer not to. But obviously, I think the one that should be, honestly, uh, should be Chun Li, Ch just makes sense. Probably the second most iconic, well, second, third most iconic character from the entire Street Fighter fran uh, franchise. She just makes sense. And she basically is the first lady of fighting games. And one of the most iconic video game characters in general. So I, I, I don't think I need to defend my case too much more on Chun-Li. Then for Final Fantasy, um, any, another protag, I don't know, another protagonist. Noctis could be it. Uh, what is it? Lightning also could be it as a playable fighter. Um, should they go with the route of a different Final Fantasy character, uh, as in a different game from Final Fantasy, not just from Final Fantasy VII? Should they go with the Final Fantasy VII secondary character? Then I think three characters are up for debate, with one of them I think being the most advantaged one. We have Tifa, Aerith, and Sephiroth. I think Tifa and Aerith are very popular, could very well work, and they would be more, a lot different, a lot more different from um, Cloud than Sephiroth would, but it, I, I would prefer Sephiroth just for the fact that a villain, and it would be really cool to have. And I think that, honestly, I think it would be between Tifa and Sephiroth, the choice, um, but I would still pick Sephiroth over Tifa, just because I want, I want that villainous bastard into the game. And I honestly think it will be a cool thing to have there. Um, too many times Smash Bros goes with just the heroes and not the villains. And it will be cool to see a villain, much like Dr. Eggman, a villain getting to Smash. Um, though it's changing and you are not just getting the heroes. Um, then for Castlevania, there could truly only be one and it is Alucard. I don't, I don't, I don't, again, I don't think I have to explain myself too much on this one. Alucard, a lot of, a, more, a lot of popular, probably popu more popular than the Belmonts at this point. I believe he even was the original pick for uh, Ultimate, but Sakurai decided to go with the originals and with the Belmonts. And to be fair, it should always be the Belmonts. A uh, Belmont should have been the first character in Smash from the Castlevania franchise because... Well, it's the Belmonts. The franchise is literally all about them, basically. Them and, and Dracula. Then for Persona, and this is where we get to the third parties that were added via DLC. Uh, so I only have two picks, basically. Should they choose to go outside of, of, of Persona 5, I put another protagonist. It just makes sense um, to do that if they are going to add another Persona character. And if they're going to go from uh, the Street or oh, Street Fighter, from Persona 5, I believe, and I could be wrong on this, and please correct me if I'm wrong on her name, Kazumi would be the character they would choose. She is the one front and, uh, front and center for Persona Royal. Just, I don't, I, I don't think there's much to say. They're basic, she's basically the new Joker, in a sense. As in, she's a part of the mascot. Uh, she's, a, and she's not basically a mascot for Persona 5, or Persona 5 Royal. So it just kind of makes sense. For Dragon Quest, should they want to differentiate themselves a little bit more from what they already did with the Dragon Quest Hero, I just put the heroines, although I do believe they would most likely be as Echoes. Uh, I could definitely see them coming in with different spells from the franchise, should they decide to do it. Uh, Dragon Quest, I don't know much about the villains, for example, so I didn't put them in. And should they go with a completely original character that is not just the, the old one, but with different uh, specials, it it would be slime i don't again the most popular more well-known thing from from um dragon quest makes sense um but i don't see how it would work but hey i wanted to the only other basic thing that i really know about dragon quest and that most people would know about dragon quest would be slime so yeah then banjo kazooie i just put in grin tilda because it you know again makes sense villain uh, would be rather unique and it would work off well um with banjo kazooie and again i don't think there's too many banjo kazooie characters that could be a part of it as the secondary character for the franchise outside of grand tilda and then we finally reach fatal fury which i put three characters um one of them is much more of a, from my understanding could work as an echo which would be rock howard uh so 
take that as you will it could be easier one to put in uh, then I put the, the other two ones that are basically the more popular well-known characters not just from Fate of Fury but from the SMK universe but it would be uh, Mai and I forget her last name right now I apologize for that and Geese Howard Geese Howard basically being the villain of the Fate of Fury franchise makes sense to have him here Mai being one of the most popular characters and the one that was removed from from the cameos now you could say she was removed from the cameos how could she be Dia or not DLC but the secondary character for the Fatal Fury uh, universe in Smash Bros. The answer to that is simple. Character redesign for somebody, so for something that's important, um, or for a character. A playable character is different than a cameo. Nintendo and Sakurai most likely would go through the route of tweaking the character a little bit to still have her in the game as a playable fighter. For example, uh, they needed and they did tweak the design of, um, of Mithra in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate to be more uh, child friendly, family friendly, more in line with Zero or Zero. So I could see the same thing being applied to Mai. And again, Pyro was just for um, the spirit. So I would see Mai as the same thing as a playable character. I guess that they didn't do that for a playable fighter or for the cameo because it was just that. A cameo and it made sense to you know not go guns blazing into that but I guess uh, no I guess that'll be it for the character part of this discussion let's discuss who should be honestly the first one to get that character in so obviously let's remove the Final Fantasy and the Dragon Quest because we know how it's hard, let's put it that way, it is to negotiate with Square Enix. Let's remind ourselves that for Dragon Quest to happen, Nintendo st uh, stepped up because Sakurai didn't believe he was going to have an easy task to do. Now remember, Dragon uh, Square Enix, the developers might be, war might be easy to work with, but that doesn't say and translate anything to the main Square Enix team or the business side of Square Enix. That's always good to remember. Then also, unfortunately, let's remove the Konami characters because I feel like they already have broken ground into Super Smash Bros. Metal Gear broke ground with being the first third-party franchise in Smash and I believe also having the first third-party assist trophy. Could be wrong on that, it could have been... Um, in terms of... I don't know, I would guess it would have to be them because Sonic was a late development entry into Super Smash Bros. For, or for, for Brawl, so I would guess that Snake was very much more included into it and so would be, um, what's the name of the guy? Oh my god, I'm having Gray Fox, okay, I was having a brain fart there for Gray Fox. Um, and then obviously another groundbreaking situation or first for the Smash Brothers universe was given to them by Castlevania having the first third party Echo, so <laughs> I guess that's another one that was a first, um, I'll say let's also take out Fatal Fury because uh, putting into the scenario of DLC, I don't think we're gonna get a Fatal F or SNK character at all for DLC. It could come in as just a single character with nothing attached to it, aka all, only maybe spirits from other franchises from SNK, uh, but like no songs and, and no stage because, or maybe a stage, but because of how much we've gotten from SNK in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate already in terms of songs. Like we had 50 songs from SNK, which was awesome to be honest. And then I'm gonna remove Gruntilda for now. It could be Gruntilda, Banjo-Kazooie. Kind of do deserve something else outside of being a first for the Smash franchise because of, well, the fact they should have already been in Smash for a long time had Microsoft not purchased them. Um, but that's it. Uh, if they were purchased by Microsoft, if they weren't purchased by Microsoft and had Nintendo bought the IP, for example, Banjo Kazooie would have been in Smash and maybe Gruntilda as well. Um, but I feel like before we get a secondary Banjo Kazooie character, we might get other, you know, third-party characters from uh, um, Microsoft. And I just realized that I'm an idiot and I completely forgot that Bayonetta is a third-party franchise. So, that's a big yikes. 
So let's just discuss Bayonetta already. Uh, Bayonetta probably will, could get a character in, uh, in uh, the Woman Sage as its own individual character. Uh, and Bayonetta would very much likely be poised as one of the first characters to get, or one of the first IPs to get a secondary character. Um, because of the connection that the character has with Nintendo, but at the same time, we didn't get a Bayonetta Echo in the shape of John or Jean or Rosa, and we didn't see it, so I'm guessing she would be out of the running, basically based on that. I know it's not a good explanation, but I, I'm sorry, I legit forgot about her until just now, until I remember that I was having to talk, when I was talking about Microsoft, then remembered I had to talk about Sega. That's when I remembered, oh yeah, Bayonet is a Sega franchise, completely forgot about that one. That's how ingrained in my brain Bayonet already is into the Nintendo universe, that I completely forgot about Bayo being a third party rep. Um, but moving on, let's move Miss Pac-Man because, well, she, I would think she would just be an Echo. And let's be completely honest, if Namco didn't, if, if Namco has yet to receive a character, period, outside of Pac-Man. We haven't gotten anything, so I think they would most likely want to get a character, a different character first, before getting uh, a secondary character, or even the Echo, because they don't even have an Echo in the game, they just have Pac-Man, which is, that's the weirdest thing to me, still. So, who does that leave us with? That leaves us, unless I forgot something, again, leaves us with Me Sonic, Mega Man, and Street Fighter. So, I'm gonna have to remove Street Fighter because, well, they already have an assist trophy, a stage, and an echo. And although it would be cool, I don't think we need another Street Fighter, as it were, before we get something else for other franchises. But uh, there's another thing that also kind of removes Mega Man, although I would love for Proto Man Zero Base or a Mega Man X for example, to be a part of Super Smash Brothers, I'm gonna have to put these two aside for a while because, <coughs> sorry, I feel like there might be other um, Capcom characters that might make it in, aka Monster Hunter and Resident Evil. These two IPs kinda should get a, friend, a, a, repre a re playable representation in Smash, not just a boss character or spirits, so I would say that would be it for those two, uh, at least in my opinion, but obviously all of this was also kind of finding reasons to exclude the other, every other franchise, because in my heart of hearts I always knew I had to do this, it has to be Sonic, the first franchise, I think, to get a third party uh, secondary rep first, because Sonic kind of got Sonic, the 90s biggest rival for Mario, the Remember the guy that made Sega actual competition for Nintendo until unfortunate, oh, fortunate or unfortunate, no matter how you look at it, demise of Sega. Well, we kind of can't say fortunate because they were poorly run, run in the mid 90s. Um, after the, mounting the, the competitiveness, they kind of crumbled, kind of under the pressure. They were doing uh, too many things, and there was no discord. There was a lot of discourse between. Sega and, well, Sega, between the two Sega, Sega of America and Sega of Japan, basically from my understanding, running themselves as separate entities. Uh, but Sonic kind of, for everything that it stood for in the 90s, most specifically the biggest competition Nintendo has ever gotten at the time, and the fact that he was the Mario's biggest rival, he kind of should get something. He wasn't the first franchise, third-party franchise to be in Smash. He never was going to be. He was beaten to the punch by Metal Gear, I believe twice, I believe that, that although Mega, uh, not Mega Man, Sakurai wanted Son Mar uh, Sonic in or Melee, uh, they were preceded still by the request from Metal Gear creator uh, Hideo Kojima for Snake to be in the game. We also have the fact that they were also going to be beaten by the fact that Pac-Man was a choice or a pick from uh, uh, Miyamoto to be, I believe in Brawl, I could be wrong on that. Um, so yeah, he. I don't think he even even got a full-blown trailer. I could be wrong on that too, but because that was so long ago, uh, maybe I am wrong on that one. But he wasn't the first third-party character in Smash. He didn't get the first third-party um, uh, assist trophy. 
and he also didn't get the first party, uh, the first party boss. He didn't have that, and he also didn't have the first, the, the first third party Echo. So I feel like the Sonic franchise, in a way, should get something. And in my opinion, it should be Eggman because if Sonic is Mario's biggest rival, who who are their uh, biggest enemies in, in in games? That will be Bowser and Dr. Eggman. And I think those two will be fun to see Eggman and. Uh, Shadow in, uh, not Shadow, <laughs> and Bowser into the game. It'd be fun to see the two heavyweights, and it kind of would come full circle. We would have Mario and, <laughs> and Sonic with Bowser and Eggman. I think that would be cool to see, and I think like Tails, Knuckles, and Shadow eventually, and maybe even Amy, if Smash was to expand third parties, just expand the third party we have upon. I would say Sonic would be the character, the franchise that would get all of these characters alongside the Eggman. So I think that I, I personally think it should be Eggman. But hey, that's just my opinion. So tell me in the comment section what do you think of all the characters chosen in this video, and who would you pick to be in the first, not first party, but in uh, be the first third party character in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate or in Super Smash Brothers as a secondary character not as an echo but a character but anyway thank you guys for watching i've been the watch of the s remember to like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys next time